Welcome to the webinar. My name is David Ng, Derivative Product Specialist with Philip Future Syndrome Bahad. Today I'm going to share with you about the recent volatility in gold prices and alternative instruments that enable you to get exposure in the current market scenario through the latest introduction of Busa Major Gold Futures Contract. Disclaimer. This webinar is for education purpose only and no part of this presentation should be taken as investment advice. Risk appetite and investment objectives differ from person to person and it is recommended that you seek advice from a personal qualified financial advisor if you are uncertain of the suitability of investment. It was indeed a volatile year for gold when prices plunged 23% from the high of US$1,700 early this year to below US$1,300 per ounce back in June. There were a series of negative news flow that flowed through the market during the first half of this year, which prompted an adverse reaction in gold prices. This created doubt in the market as whether well gold could retain its status as a safe haven instrument. Main key events that attributed the drop in gold prices were fears of QD tapering when Ben Menanke suggested a softening stand in his asset buying program back in April during FOMC meeting, coupled with rumors that Cyprus Central Bank was selling gold in bid to par down its debt level. It causes much negative sentiment in the market and fund managers were dumping gold related instruments in search for lower risk assets. Furthermore, massive outflow of ETP backed gold instrument aggravated investor sentiment towards gold. Market was also concerned on China's slower economic growth, which affected the overall market sentiment at that time. In order for us to track the behavior of gold prices, one can assess fundamental demand that drive gold prices. Gold demand can be separated into four distinct categories. Consisting jewelry demand, which contributing the major bulk of world gold demand, followed by investment demand, official sector demand, associating with central bank buying and selling of gold, and lastly technology demand. Bulk of gold demand is coming from jewelry demand. Based on the recent World Gold Council report, India is the biggest consumer in terms of jewelry demand with an annual amount of 188 tons of gold consumed in a year, followed by China with 152.8 tons in the year of 2012. Recent deposition of the Indian rupee caused import restriction on gold. Despite the mounting currency pressure, India still retains the status as the largest consumer in terms of gold jewelry demand. This chart illustrates the price of local Indian gold depicted by the red color, while world gold price is depicted by the yellow color. Based on the chart, we witness local Indian gold prices is traded at a premium to world gold prices of late when gold prices started to plunge. What keeping the local Indian gold prices high are the strong jewelry demand and the weakening rupee. There was a slight deviation from both prices for the past two months as Indian government imposed heavy import restriction of gold into the country, which caused a tightening of the gold supplies in the Indian market and causes local gold prices to rise even further. And this caused a deviation as we can see from the chart. Apart from India, China is the second largest consumer in gold jewelry demand based on the figures from World Gold Council back in 2012. This chart illustrates the yearly percentage change where Hong Kong and China recorded the largest percentage increase in their demand for jewelry. Strong buying volume is usually recorded before key major festivals, especially the Lunar New Year. As gold jewelries are given as gifts for friends or relatives, we reckon this buying pace will continue as current low prices are attractive enough to encourage more buying interest. Another important variable which affect gold prices is gold exchange traded products holdings, ETP holdings. ETP constitute investment demand, which is the second largest demand from world gold demand. Exchange traded products are derivatively priced, where the value is derived from gold. 
ATP consists of ETFs and ETNs. This chart clearly indicates the close relationship between gold price and ETP holdings. As mentioned earlier, sharp reduction in gold ATP holdings aggravated the fall in gold price. These holdings are indicative of investor sentiment towards the position of gold. When holdings are high, investors are bullish on gold positions. And when holdings are low, investors generally bearish on gold sentiment. Based on chart, we witnessed EDP holdings is peak at 2,500 tons of gold holdings early this year, before negative news flow came into the market and causes prices to depress. As of October 2013, Total gold holdings remain net outflow, which put a weight on gold prices. Another major contributor to the world gold demand is official sector demand, which represents buying and selling from central bank. According to a recent report by World Gold Council, central bank buying represents 12% of total world gold demand, where majority of central bank in developed nations were net sellers. However, Emerging countries are gearing up their purchase on gold, especially CIS countries, Korea and Indonesia. Central bank engaged in buying and selling of gold as a measure to rebalance between currency reserves and gold holdings. China being a large economy has only 1% exposure in gold relative to its currency exposure. This goes to show how much of room that China is still able to hold up on their gold. Apart from fundamentals that affect gold prices, one should also monitor other macroeconomic variables that could impact on gold prices. An important variable is the US 10-year Treasury yield rate against the gold price. Based on the chart presented, we notice a sharp negative correlation whereby the yield on 10-year Treasury started to spike and gold prices tend to react negatively. Back in March this year, during FOMC meeting, Ben Bernanke hinted to the market that he may start tapering on the QE program later this year, which created a hike in yields as market anticipated higher rates going forth. Signs of economic recovery in the US was also weighing in on gold prices. Rise in yield levels signals an economy recovery which has a negative relationship on gold. Besides tracking the relationship between gold prices and EDP holdings, it is vital to assess the relationship between gold and US dollars as well. This chart illustrates the price movement between the US dollar represented by the orange line and gold represented by the white line. The red shaded area on the lower part of the chart depict a negative casual relationship between gold price and the US dollar. Recent strengthening on the US dollar amid fears of QE tapering is negative for gold, whereby tapering of QE is in effect mopping up excess liquidity in the system and thus strengthening the US dollar. Eventual rise in the US dollar and positive economic signs in US economy reduces the appeal of gold. After analyzing the factors that may affect gold price, we thus have to identify several key risks of potential headwinds in the market going forward. First, is the start of QE tapering which may cause great volatility in the market. Plus, with a rising US dollar environment which may wait on the gold price as seen in the previous slides. Higher yield rate, especially the 10-year US Treasury rate, is counterproductive for gold. A higher rate indicates that a US economy recovery is on the way and this is negative for gold. Now we have understand the factors that may affect gold prices, we should then explore the various methods one can get exposure in the gold market. In this session, we will primarily focus on gold futures contract as a direct instrument to gold exposure. Benefits of using futures contract is that it's highly flexible. Investors are able to utilize futures to short the market giving the holder an added flexibility, especially during a bear market. Execution through online trading system, regulated by the reputable exchange, gives more assurance and credibility to investors. Furthermore, rates offered are cheap and attractive. 
Given all the benefits to trade gold futures contract, one can start trading on the Busa Malaysia futures gold contract, which launched on the 7th October 2013. This gold futures contract is traded on 100 grams per contract with a minimum price fluctuation of 0 0.05 and 5 ringgit per tick. It is denominated in ringgit Malaysia and trading hours starts from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for the morning session, while the afternoon session starts from 2.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Here we compare the difference between Busa Malaysia Gold Futures Contract with COMEX Gold Futures Contract traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Main difference are in their respective sizes. Busa Malaysia Gold Futures Contract has a contract size of 100 gram, while COMEX Gold Futures Contract is much bigger in size with a size of 100 trade ounces per contract. Busa Gold Futures Contract is denominated in Ringgit Malaysia while COMEX Gold is denominated in US Dollars and able locus investors to minimize currency risk when trading Gold Futures Contract denominated in other currencies. All in all, Busa Malaysia Gold Futures Contract gives investors another option to get an exposure in the gold market with a smaller size denomination and Ringgit based contract that minimize currency exposure. Volume and open interest of this contract has seen on the rise since the inception. Smaller contract size compared to other gold futures contracts on other exchange will provide more liquidity and flexibility to traders and investors. Gold in general is a good tool to hedge against inflation. If you look at a chart, gold returned for the past 30 years after including inflation level in US still register a good return with an average of 4.19% return over the years. If you base on 10 years historical average, gold roughly averaged 12% return. This goes to show that gold serves as a good hedge against inflation. Gold is also useful as a diversification tool in your portfolio and is mostly negative correlated with other major group of assets. As we can see from the chart, gold tend to correlate negatively to other major commodities such as silver, aluminium, palladium, oil, soybean, corn, coffee, natural gas, and many more. This session of Mac Minas series is brought to you by Philip Futures in collaboration with Busa Malaysia. For more information on the risks and returns of trading gold futures or other types of futures, please approach one of our representatives.